I started my day at 6.15 this morning because I thought I'm going to get up and spend some beautiful time with Jesus, preparing and being ready for you. And 10 minutes later, a six-year-old appeared in my bed with a book of facts, which he then spent 25 minutes reading to me. Did you know that an elephant poos the same volume as six six-year-olds? There you go. That is the kind of information that I was subject to this morning. There's a lot of excitement in my house. Um, my boys don't just want to know how many days it is till Christmas. On a fairly regular basis, they ask Google how many hours, how many minutes, how many seconds. I, I don't really know what that information does for them, but it just makes them more excited because Christmas is so exciting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a nice age, isn't it, when it's just exciting and you don't have to think about any of the rest of the stuff. And actually, we're not just about to hit Christmas, we're also about to change the year. We're um, Very quickly after our, our Christmas celebrations comes New Year's Eve and comes the arrival of 2024. And as we're standing on the brink of something, as we're in these last stages of preparation for something, um, it's quite good to stop and to reflect, isn't it? And this season of Advent, typically in the church, has been a season of preparation, of getting ready. And we talk about these uh, characteristics of how we should be feeling at this time. Peace, goodwill, uh, joy. I don't know how many of you have been feeling those things. I have uh, some confessions to make to you this morning. Last week, I had neither peace nor joy nor goodwill to all mankind. In fact, I found myself uh, in the middle of a road rage incident. Um, you can't believe it, I'm sure, but it's true. I was shopping in uh, Bagley. I'd been to B&M to pick up some raffle prizes for a local raffle that we're running on Merseybank. And uh, it had been a hideous trip because I have a two-year-old and he doesn't like shopping. And his favorite thing is to run far away from me uh, in a shop, which is embarrassing. Uh, and the worst part of it was when I went to pay and I had all the things lined up to pay and then my card got declined and there was a big queue and he ran out of the shop into the car park and then I just had to flee the shop and then I had to bring him back in screaming and attempt to put the packing in there. Anyway, I was, I was fairly cheesed off by the time I got in the car and then I started driving home and then a Tesla, um, a big Tesla, was uh, trying to merge into the same space as I was and I felt like I was in front so I should merge in and he felt like he was in front so he should merge in and then he let off a big beep of his horn and I thought I'm not having that, I'm going to beat my horn because I am cheesed off with you and everyone this morning. Um, we got a new car about six months ago, I don't think I've ever beeped the horn of my car before so I let rip with a mighty beep on my horn and then I realised my car has got the most pathetic horn you've ever heard <laughs> in your life. So my rage went like, it, I was so angry and so annoyed that I went to beat the horn. And then the noise was so pathetic that immediately I started laughing and the whole situation was diffused. And me and my son just laughed all the way home about how ridiculous this was. And yet when it's in, in the minute, in the moment, we just get so annoyed and so frustrated. And all this grace that I thought I had and this person that I thought I was and this Christian that I professed to be was kind of slightly undermined by this horrible, horrible rage that just rose up in me in this supposed season of goodwill and peace to all mankind. And it, to me, it kind of just reflected something of the, the disconnect something sometimes that exists between what we want to be the case and what is the case, or what we say uh, we are or, or want people to think we are and then what we really are, or where we'd like to be with Jesus and where really we are with Jesus when things get pressed and pushed and it gets difficult. And there's so much change that I've wanted to see this year that I haven't seen. There's so many things that I've wanted to be different. As I look back on 23, and it's good to look back on the year, isn't it? There's many, many situations where I'm just so frustrated because that person didn't get healed, that situation didn't get changed, that person made that decision, that court case went that way, all of those different things. And, and I desire change uh, in myself, in my community, in the nations. Like, we don't want to be singing about our little town of Bethlehem and then reading on the news about people being killed in churches in Gaza and, and a war that seems completely intractable and like that's not right like that's that's wrong there should be peace and all that you know I want to see change and yet there is so little change in me sometimes from year to year 
We've just sung that song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and there's those lines in it, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. God is so unchanging, and yet we are not. We can't, why do we... Why do we drift? Why do we wander? Why don't we change to be more like him? Why do we stay as we are? I just want to read us a couple of scriptures uh, to focus our attention this morning. I loved hearing Matt um, kind of perform uh, Luke for us yesterday and and draw us just to some of the emotions and the, the, the feelings of the characters. And obviously it's at Christmas, we hear a lot about Mary and she's one of my faves. Um, And when the angel brings the news of the pregnancy to Mary, her reaction is amazing. First of all, she is concerned and troubled. Then she asks some questions. Um, And I'm going to read from Luke chapter 1, verses 34. So Mary says, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I just want to draw our attention to those last two verses. As we consider our kind of inability to change, as we consider our unfaithfulness sometimes to God, Mary's response to this incredible news that she was going to be the mother of the Son of God, uh, the angel says to her, no word from God will ever fail. And she says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. In saying yes to Jesus in that moment, in saying yes to carrying the Son of God, she moves from obscurity to a central figure in the history of humanity. She moves from the honourable state of someone betrothed to the questionable state of an unwed mother. She moves from security, stability, a life lived with a husband, maybe some children, some industry and a quiet life, to one of poverty, insecurity and homelessness. She moves from being young, from being healthy, from being idealistic maybe, to being pregnant and everything that that brings. An expectant mother, a mother who has to move around. She grows up from a child to a parent. She moves from stability to a future of wonder, amazement, sacrifice. We often read John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And this yesterday when I was pondering this, I was thinking... For Mary so loved God that she became the mother and she gave up his only son. Like her sacrifice, I'm not like, I could go on a whole tangent here, but I was just thinking about it. Like how much she loved God to say yes to the whole package, to everything that that would bring. When we say yes to Jesus, do we say yes, but I want it to look like this? Or yes, but so long as we don't end up there. Yes, but I still want to fulfill my dreams of marriage and kids. Yes, but I don't want to be poor. Yes, but I don't want to be uncomfortable. Yes, but Mary just said yes. She said, may it be to me as you have said. And the word of God never fails. That was the response that she was, uh, that was the, the truth that she was making her response to. Her yes led to the birth of Jesus. It led to the changing of the destiny of the whole of humanity. His death led to the change for all of us to give us free access to Jesus. And we live in a time of change. We live in a season of change. We can change. We are being changed. But we also look forward to a future when everything will change. I went to... um, a carol service at our local Catholic church last week because our kids are in Catholic school and they were invited. And I loved it. They just It was scripture, it was carols, and it was hundreds of people who wouldn't ordinarily be in church on a regular basis. And right at the end, um, the scripture that they closed it with is the one that I'm going to close with this morning. And it was Revelation 21, 1 to 5, because let's remember what the angel said to Mary, no word from the Lord will ever fail. And this is the word of the Lord to John. He says this, Revelation 21, 1 to 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. 
and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. In this season, let's press in to the word of God. It is trustworthy, it is true. What he says will not fail. We can stand unchanging on his word. And yet we can also be changed and be agents of change as we wait for that day, as we prepare a couple of weeks ago, we talked, didn't we, in prayer day about being prepared, being ready. And there's, there's work for each of us to do in our hearts. We can't go unprepared when he comes back. We have to be ready. We have to deal with our stuff. We have to work on these foolish and, and fickle hearts that we have. So that's my challenge to us as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, as we look towards the new year, as there's a changing of the seasons. Let's get ready. Not just to celebrate, not just to buy the turkey, not just to peel the spuds and all that kind of thing, but let's be ready for the day when everything will change as it is changing day by day. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that um, we would say yes to you again this morning and not yes with buts, not yes with conditions, God, but yes, as Mary did. Yes, may it happen to us as you say not as we wish, not as we hope and dream, not as we idealize. But God, I pray that you would change us, you'd transform us to be your likeness in this world, to be your hands, your feet, your presence, to be your agents of change. And God, I pray that you would start with our hearts, God, where they are fickle and where they wander and where they are unfaithful, God. Would you transform us to look more like you, to carry more of the fruit of your spirit and more of your qualities, And God, we do pray for change in this world of ours. We pray that you would move this Christmas, that you would be so very present among us in our family homes, in our communities, with the people that we gather with. And as we look to the new year, God, would you move us to be fully in line with your spirit and with what you're doing? In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.